Hello, and welcome to uh, lecture number eight. Uh, and today, this neuroscience lecture, our cognitive neuroscience lecture, we'll be talking about navigating the brain. Uh, in particular, sort of how we locate areas of the brain and how we discuss different areas of the brain. So we'll start off with some discussion of anatomical directions. Um, then we'll talk about cortical versus subcortical structures, and then sort of look at some surface features of the cortex, which become important in our next lecture. So, uh, generally speaking, we talk about um, navigating the brain in anatomical directions, uh, which are an artifact of the fact that these were all designed for animals that are on all fours. So, as you can see from this first uh, view, you'll have to notice that the dorsal side of the brain and the dorsal side of the body and the dorsal side of the spine are not necessarily the same in humans. So while the top of this dog is its dorsal side, the top of its brain is its dorsal side because we walk on two feet, the dorsal side of the brain is the top of our head, whereas the dorsal side of the spine is towards our back. Um, rostral and caudal are two anatomical terms that uh, will often be used. I tend to use anterior and um, Posterior, so anterior is the front side of the brain, posterior is the back side of the brain, but people will use often different uh, characteristics. So let's get into these anatomical directions. So here's the brain um, being sliced up in a variety of different ways. You can see the dorsal side of the brain is also the superior side of the brain. This is where things get confusing. So superior always means up. So when we are in the brain, towards the top of the brain, that's dorsal. When we're in the um, trunk of your body, the dorsal side is towards your back, but the superior side is towards the top, so towards your neck, chest. I, I didn't invent these, so don't yell at me. Um, <laughs> so then the anterior part of the brain is the front, posterior part is the back, much like if you've heard people talking about the posterior part of their anatomy, that's uh, the easier way to think about this. You can see, of course, the dorsal and ventral side of the spinal cord, um, are towards the, the dorsal side is towards the back, the ventral is towards the chest. Um, we also want to think about medial and lateral. Um, so medial means towards the middle, as you can see in the bottom left here. Lateral means towards the outside. So the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex is going to be on the top side of the brain towards the front um, and also towards the lateral side. Uh, we also look at the brain in MRI sections and in actual anatomical sections in three different uh, views generally. We have a coronal section which uh, slices uh, through uh, sort of left to right or right to left uh, through the brain. Um, and you can see that in the top left. The mid sagittal section goes start to, sort of straight down the middle of the brain. Um, and then a horizontal section is horizontal. So we're going to take a look at a variety of these um, images just to get you an idea of ways in which we talk about these. So um, we're talking about the body, the anterior, uh, and ventral is towards the front, whereas, of course, anterior is the front of the brain versus ventral is uh, the bottom of the brain. The dorsal side is towards the back versus the dorsal side is at the top of um, your head. Uh, and the posterior side is still... Uh, similar. So posterior in the brain um, is <laughs> back of the brain, but the dorsal side of the brain is the top versus your trunk or abdomen. The dorsal side and the posterior side are the same. Um, we talk about proximal and distal. Well, they just simply mean proximal means close, distal means far, and that will come up in a variety of areas. Um, Again, some ways in which we sort of slice up the brain. We have um, here on the right from the Gazaniga textbook uh, where you would slice a mid-sagittal section, a lateral sag sagittal section, a coronal section, and a horizontal section. You can see these here. The coronal um, plane, uh, coronal is uh, a word for crown. And so if you think about uh, a crown uh, and how it might sit on your head, that's kind of the way to think about it. Uh, again, you can see uh, a variety of different ways in which we slice up these anatomical directions. And I just wanted to provide a number of these uh, just to make them clear, whichever one you find most useful. Perfect. Uh, here's a full summary of the uh, anatomical terms. So dorsal, ventral, anterior, posterior, superior is above, inferior is below. 
Lateral is towards the side. Medial is towards the middle. Proximal is close. Distal is far. Ipsilateral is on the same side of the body. Contralateral is on the opposite side of the body. So, for example, we have contralateral control of the body. So the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. Then we have the coronal planes, sagittal planes, and horizontal planes. So this is a nice summary. You'll definitely want to keep handy. Uh, we also have different parts of the nervous system I wanted to lay out here. We talked a little bit about this in the previous lecture. Lamina are layers of cell bodies uh, in the cortex. Columns are sets of perpendicular cell, cells that are perpendicular to the surface of the cortex with similar properties. Columns are going to come up a lot when we talk about vision. Tracks are a set of axons known as projections. They'll go from A to B. Then we have nerves, also a set of axons in the periphery. A nucleus is a cluster of cell bodies within the central nervous system. Um, then we get ganglions, which is clusters of neuron cell bodies, usually outside the central nervous system. Then we have gyri and sulci, which we talk uh, about here in a little bit. A gyrus is a protuberance on the surface of the brain, and a sulcus is a fold or groove that separates one gyrus from another. And then a fissure is a long, deep sulcus. So generally, all vertebrate brains are divided into cortex uh, and subcortical structures. Um, these subcortical structures are thought to be of early phylogenetic origin, as most vertebrate species have some version of these subcortical uh, structures. Certainly all mammals do, uh, and they're pretty similar. Um, and these are parts of the brain that really function um, outside of conscious awareness. So for example, the spinal cord, the medulla, pons, midbrain. We're going to get into these in the next lecture. Um, but these are all areas, for example, the medulla is what's keeping you breathing and your heart beating. Um, the um, cerebellum and some other subcortical structures are involved in motor functioning. And so most species have some version of these um, cortical structures. So the cortex is often referred to as the neocortex. It's also some kind, sometimes called the telencephalon. So part of the cortex uh, can be divided into neocortex and mesocortex. And again, we'll get into that in later lectures. But essentially, it's called the neocortex because it's the newest um, in terms of evolution. And again, those subcortical structures are generally those that are directly related to survival, keeping your heart beating, keeping you moving, etc. So that's just a general look at cortex versus subcortical structures. We're actually going to spend a whole lecture on subcortical structures, and then we'll talk about cortex. Uh, again, the cortex is sometimes also known as the association area, and we'll get into what are the association areas versus the sensory areas. But these association areas, particular our prefrontal cortex, is one of the things that separates us from other mammals because this is how we develop language, abstract thought, are able to plan and coordinate future actions. So finally, um, we're going to look at some surface features of the cortex. So the surface of the cortex is divided by landmarks known as sulci and gyri, or a sulcus and a gyrus, for their singular. So a sulcus, as I said a moment ago, is an infolding of the cortical structure. Um, deep sulci are known as fissures. So there's the central fissure and the lateral fissure, or what's known as the silva, sylvian fissure. It's also the cal calcarin uh, sulcus. Um, a gyrus is a ridge or outfolding uh, of the surface of the cerebral cortex, and they're very easy to spot. Uh, this makes an easy way to sort of navigate your around the brain. So there's several landmarks you're going to want to know um, and be able to identify. The central sulcus, the precentral and postcentral gyrus, and the sylvan fissure are the first ones we'll start with. So straight up, here we have the um, inner hemispheric fissure, sometimes called the central fissure. Um, which divides us between the right and the left hemisphere. You can also see right, um, sorry, this is the um, central sulcus right along here, which divides the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. And you can see there are these two gyri um, uh, in this right um, photo. Uh, where there are outcroppings where you can see the postcentral gyrus and the precentral gyrus. So they are on the precentral gyrus is in front of the central sulcus. The postcentral sulcus is, on, is after the um, central sulcus. The precentral gyrus is the primary motor cortex. The postcentral gyrus is the primary somatosensory cortex. The sylvan fissure is what um, divides the frontal lobe from the temporal lobe and then gets us right up to the parietal lobe. 
Uh, so we're going to talk about the each of these different gyri, the inferior frontal gyrus, the midfrontal gyrus, superior frontal gyrus. We'll also be talking about the inferior to prior lobule, the um, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. All of these become really important as we start thinking about um, functional and anatomical differences. So this is the way in which we navigate across the brain. Right, that's a quick introduction to navigating the brain. Uh, we will be talking in more detail about these structures in the next lecture.